Hello class. This is our lecture on really getting into the or, or out of the end of uh, rotational kinematics and getting into rotational kinetics. Uh, in fact, we're going to do both in this lecture. That's the plan <laughs> anyway. We'll see how it all goes. Um, so the first thing I want to do is that problem that I mentioned. Uh, so this is uh, uh, rotational kinematics. All right. And you, you remember all of our uh, various things here that S equals R theta um, omega equals Oh, wait a second. <laughs> uh, R omega <laughs> equals V. So I saved myself. And then um, uh, acceleration equals R times uh, alpha. All right. So those are three equations that we have for um, rotational kinematics. And uh, what we want to do is we want to look at uh, this elevator problem. Right, and there's two parts to this elevator problem. Let's look at the first part first. So we know that the elevator, uh, uh, there's 100 floors in the building. Each floor is, uh, uh, no, I think that's the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> I don't get a lot of phone calls, obviously. Um, anyway, well, in the middle of lectures. <laughs> so um, let's go back to this 100 floors. So that's going to equal 300 meters, right, height. Not that we're really going that, that far, or even looking at, uh, you know, the total height, uh, except for when the thing starts falling. So what we said was uh, if this thing goes uh, 10 floors in 30 seconds. So 10 floors in 30 seconds. And so what that equals was 30 meters per 30 seconds or one meter per second is how fast the um, elevator goes, which you know is a normal elevator. Uh, and we also know that the winch, right, that has the cable on it, right, is a distance r, and uh, we want to find out uh, what r is. I'll tell you what, someone left me, a, I'm just going to pause for a second. Sorry about that class, I thought it might be something important, but per usual, <laughs> no, not, not, not important at all. You know, uh, I, I, I think everybody here sees this. I'm just going to write this out anyway, 30 meters per 30 seconds, because uh, I'm not sure if you know, everybody is, uh, can remember from the last lecture, but whatever. Uh, so what we wanted to find out was how large was the radius of the, the winch, right? And so what do we know? Let's look at our equations over here. We, we, oh, you know what I forgot to tell you is that the, uh, the winch is rotating at 100 RPM, right? You know, 100 RPM, what, what is that uh, in radians per second? 100, uh, I know I don't have to do this, but I want everybody to, Sometimes it takes more, more times to see it. Yes, revolution. So I've got one revolution and I've got two pi radians, right? And then I've got one minute and I've got 60 seconds. So you can see it's like a 10 to 1. I've done this before, but, uh, you know, everybody I think can, can see uh, what it is. And that's going to be 10.47 radians per second. So radians per second is always about one-tenth, as you can see, of uh, revolutions per minute. It's sort of a good rule of thumb so that if, if you do the transmission thing and you get 16 billion, you'll know that you've done it wrong, right? Because it's always about one 
tenth. And remember which way it works too. It's one tenth of revolutions per minute equals radians per second, not the other way around. And so we have this uh, relationship here, right? V, and we know that this equals omega, right? So the only thing that we don't know, we know V, we know omega, so we need R. So let's do R. So R is just going to be V over omega. V is one meter per second. divided by 10.47 radians per second, excuse me. And that gives us um, 0 0.0955, 0 0.0955. Now why is, <laughs> why does that, uh, Oh, no, 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 that's right, because we're working in meters, so that would be uh, 9.55 centimeters, right? 9.55 centimeters. And since there's about 2.54 uh, centimeters to an inch, we can see that uh, this is just about four inches, four inch radius, remember. So we're talking radius, so it would be about a eight inch diameter winch radius that this elevator had if uh, elevators really worked like this. All right, so uh, we've got that now, right? Now what I wanna, uh, I wanna look at is what if the elevator, so this is part A. Now, what if the elevator, why don't I slice off a piece of the board here? What if we say that the uh, elevator were to be up on the 100th floor? So the elevator is on the 100th floor and all of a sudden uh, this winch break, breaks loose and the, the winch starts rotating. And of course the cable starts uh, going down. Now, here's what I wanna know. The cable has a safety mechanism. And the safety mechanism goes off to stop, to allow the brakes, throw the brakes out when it equals, um, oh, excuse me, I shouldn't have put W sub S because we've got to figure that out, but uh, uh, I'll just write it down here. When N safety equals 1000 RPM. So what is 1000 RPM? Well, you know, if 100 RPM is 10.47, then wouldn't 1,000 RPM be 104.7 radians per second? I'm just trying to use my board up here as everybody can see. Okay, yes. So that's what it would be. So uh, our 1,000 revolutions per minute is gonna be equal to that. So that's something that we've got to look at because that's when our safety mechanism is going to go off. All right, so how far is this going to drop? All right, I've got my elevator. How far is the elevator? Let's just draw the elevator here. Now the elevator is gonna drop, right? It's still connected to the, the cable. So it's falling and it, it's dropping in, uh, in free fall, right? So it's dropping. When is this going to get when is this gonna go from the zero all the way up to 1,000, right? When will omega equal 1,000, oh, I better put 104.7 radians per second. So let's look at that uh, analysis. First of all, this will be falling at an acceleration of g, right? So we know we've got our, our uh, uh, equation here. We know that the linear acceleration of this is gonna be equal to r, and we know what r is, times the uh, angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration is just going to be my nine point 
eight one, of course the minus means nothing here, meters per second squared divided by uh, point zero nine five five meters. See how I always refer back to my primary units? Uh, you should uh, you know, make that a habit yourself. So 9.81 meters per second squared. And really, we, you know, like I say, we're looking at that. Uh, the minus would only mean uh, you know, which way the thing might be turning. All right. And what that gives us is 102.6 radians per second squared. That's what our acceleration is once this thing starts going down. Right? So how far am I going to go before that thing uh, uh, locks up on me? Just a second. Oh my, <laughs> it's a recording? Oh my God. Uh, just, well, uh, look, I, I'm almost done with it anyway. I think, I don't even think I turned that off. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I was just looking at the problem there for a second. Uh, this sort of a blank spot in the middle of this. That, I, I, I swear to God, I thought that I uh, paused it there. Um, anyway, I was just looking at this e equation that I've got. And um, what we've got is uh, my final uh, angular uh, a, a velocity is equal to my original angular velocity plus my um, angular acceleration times time, right? And uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what, how long it's going to be until this locks up. And so the time then, if you look at the, the things that we've got here, time is just going to be because the, um, the final um, is going to be 104 point, uh, just figured it, seven radians per second. And then this is going to be the 102, um, you know, 0.6 radians per second squared times T. So it's just really that divided by that. So 104.7 radians per second divided by, 102.6 radians per second squared. And that tells us that the time is going to be 1.01 seconds. I'm sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I was looking at the problem. I did not realize that you guys are there. Now, it's gonna be one, they're gonna be in here. Let's say that this is, uh, you know, they're at the 100th floor right? Now they're in here. All of a sudden, the, the brake breaks loose and this starts falling. It's going to take 1.01 seconds for it to go from zero RPM 
to 1,000 RPM. Does everyone see that? It's going to take 1.01 seconds for this thing to go from zero, basically, to 1,000 RPM in free fall at minus 9.81 with the 9.55 radius uh, winch in the center there. All right. Now, how far does that drop? How far does that drop? Well, we said that it was on the 300th uh, floor, right? So it's 300 meters minus one half, and we said that it was dropping in free fall, so 9.81 meters per second squared, right? Times the time that it's falling until that locks up, which is gonna be 1.01 seconds squared. And that gives us a, uh, uh, a distance that we're going to be at. And I think that you'll all see that it's like 294, uh, but whatever. Uh, I'm just going to do the distance actually. 0. 0.5 times 9.81 times 1.01 squared, could be one squared, equals 5. 5.00 exactly. So it's going to be at 295 meters. So it fell 5 meters before the safety mechanism kicked on uh, once this got up to 1,000 RPM. So it's basically zero to 1,000 RPM in, um, you know, th that fast. Because if you look at, uh, you know, when it goes into free fall, how fast that's going to be turning uh, or, or uh, accelerating. That means every second this is going to go up to 102.6. So after two seconds, it's, it's 204.6, right? So it's not 1,000, it's 2,000. So very quickly, could we have set it at 2,000? They would have been scared to death. They've already fell five meters. That's like, that's like two floors, right? Could you imagine being in the 100th floor and all of a sudden the elevator starts going down and starts falling in free fall and it takes you two floors that one second before the thing snaps tight? Oh, my God. I can't wait. Can't wait to do that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, yeah, because in my case, Murphy's Law would snap in, and uh, then everything would snap, and I would just fall free fall to, to the bottom. Of course, I'd be weightless, or, you know, supposedly weightless on the way down. Now, let's go on uh, to the uh, kinetics of rotation, because that's what I, I want to look at here, too. So we've got rotational kinematics, and now we're going to have kinetics of rotation. I'm sorry for the blank spot in the middle of this lecture. There's <laughs> nothing I can do about it. I, I don't think so anyway. I mean, I don't go back and like edit the thing or whatever. I'm sure that some film editor someplace could do that for me someday if uh, posterity ever needed to know, but I'm sure they don't. All right. Let's hope the phone doesn't disturb me again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope this recording has come out, except for that dead spot in the middle. I hope the recording has come out well. Now, what we're going to look at now is this. And this is the same sheet of paper that I used when I was looking at moments of inertia of common geometrical shapes, right? And it's in your book, of course. And this is mass moments of inertia of common geometric shapes over here. And so that's what I, uh, you know, uh, want to look at now. And specifically, I want to look at this for, for a disk or for a uh, circular cylinder. These two right now, because I'm going to be talking about flywheels, right? And what is a flywheel? If, if I had a flywheel, it would be something like this, right? If I'm just drawing it in a plan view, and then it would have some thickness, right? And it would rotate. That's not a smiley face, it's a rotation arrow. It would rotate, uh, I think I made a new smiley face, uh, around in a circle, right? And it would contain energy. 
and how much energy could that contain uh, due to its mass and due to its shape. And that's why we look at mass moments uh, of inertia. Uh, when we looking at, uh, and, and you can just, you can get these. I don't know if I'm gonna derive, I may derive, uh, you know, mass moment of inertia. Really, I, when I, uh, well, I may derive mass moment of inertia for like a circular cylinder or whatever, but these are things that you can easily find in, you know, reference manuals anyway. It's not like you have to memorize these. Um, I mean, maybe one for like a, a disc or a circular cylinder, you know, uh, but I've, I haven't done that. Um, pi r squared over two, or did I say pi? M r squared over two. So for a cylinder, the mass moment of inertia is m r squared over two. Now, I know what you're thinking. That must be kilogram meters squared for uh, the units of that. Yes, absolutely. It is kilogram meters squared. Sort of got a little uh, <clears throat> excited with that G there. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I, I soaked these in the uh, thing the other day in, in some acetone. <laughs> Maybe I just got a, a sharp place, but that's right. That's what it is. So when we're, when we're talking about kinetics, we're talking about uh, energy, aren't we? So remember when we were talking about uh, one half mv squared, that equals kinetic energy. And then we said that uh, potential energy was mass times the gravitational constant, at least at the surface of the earth, times the height above a certain uh, reference plane, usually ground. Well, rotational energy is one half I omega squared. So I can store energy in the flywheel, can't I? You're probably saying, why didn't people ever do that? Why didn't they ever make like a flywheel so that you could have regenerative braking, uh, you know, using a flywheel on like the bottom of a car or something like that? And the answer to that question is they did. Britain for a long time had buses that used a, a, a large flywheel on the bottom of the double-decker bus. And in fact, uh, they, they used that and they would they would do exactly that. They would store the energy from, from their braking because they're never going all that fast. And then they would engage the flywheel into the drive shaft to get them started up in that initial um, acceleration away from when they picked up passengers. Wasn't that a fantastic idea? Because then they could then engage the uh, internal combustion engine when they're going, you know, longer distances um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, in between stops. And it would give them like, uh, you know, they could just store the thing in the flywheel there and then they could just take right off again uh, with the flywheel. And since it was mechanical, you, you had almost zero, you had almost 100% efficiency. Why don't we have flywheels in every car then? Or why didn't we before, uh, let's say we had regenerative braking that uh, works like a generator and recharges our lithium batteries and our Priuses. That's the question that I want to ask. Um, and the answer to that is they're too heavy. They're too heavy. And, and I want to, to show you a, um, I want to show you an example of that. Uh, that really brings that point home, okay? So in this example, I have a car that's going 62 miles per hour. Now we're gonna change that miles per hour into uh, meters per second. And I'm sure that you're already ahead of me and have that all done while I uh, mentioned some other things, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, about the uh, problem. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have 
um, a flywheel underneath this car. The density of the flywheel, I'll put some of the, the characteristics down here. The density of the flywheel is going to be 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter, right? So it's very, it's, it's like a lead titanium composite. Let's think of it that way. And it's going to be circular just like this. And in fact, this distance right here is gonna be 0.1 meters, 0.1 meters. It's a point. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I've done several lectures today. So this right here is gonna be a meter diameter, but it's going to be 0.5 meter radius, right? So the thickness, <laughs> I really, I really should uh, redo that, but I think I can actually save it by just putting a line somehow between there, 0.1 meters. And of course, it's gonna be uh, done in the problem anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so 0.1 meters thick, 0.5 meters uh, radius, one meter diameter. It's made out of a material that's a uh, titanium alloy that's 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The car is going 62 miles an hour, and by now everybody knows that's 27.71 meters per second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer all of the energy from this car, right? This car is going along on the freeway somewhere, and all of a sudden it's got it's, got its regenerative braking in its uh, flywheel underneath. Uh, we're gonna examine the flywheel later, uh, in, in the next um, video, but we want to finish this problem first. Now, uh, you want to transfer all of that energy into the flywheel. How fast is that flywheel going to be rotating after I transfer all of the energy in there? And you know, I'm also gonna uh, add to a little difficulty in the problem. I'm gonna say well, it's gonna take us three seconds. So basically you're on the freeway, you're slowing down because there's some type of uh, thing going on in front of you on the freeway, right? And you sort of are stopping you know, a little fast because you didn't realize it was gonna happen. So it's about three seconds and so, you're, you've got constant pressure on that regenerative brake pedal, and it's being transferred uniformly into the flywheel. And then when you start up, you just engage the flywheel and it'll bring you right back up to 62 miles an hour, theoretically. Actually, you'd only get up to about 60 miles an hour. However, <clears throat> why didn't we do that? I mean, this thing, this flywheel, everything else that we've got here, well, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at what the um, uh, mass of that flywheel is going to be, right? Because we know that it's, well, actually, why don't I do this? Why don't I say that I is one half times the mass of the flywheel, and that would be the volume times the density, times R squared, because I can simplify it a little bit, right? So one half, and now the mass uh, is the volume of this. And we know that the volume of this is gonna be pi times R squared times L, right? That's the volume of a cylinder. And then times the density, and then times R squared. Where have I seen that before, right? So we can simplify this uh, a, a little bit, can't we? Because I've got r squared here and r squared there, so that's r to the fourth. So it really becomes pi r to the fourth l rho over two. Does everybody see that? So let's just punch that in. So I've got pi times 0.5 to the fourth times 0.1. It's not even on, is it Scott? No, it's not. Okay, pi <laughs> times 0.5 to the fourth times 0.1 times 8,000 
equals 100. Oh, did I divide by two? Divided by two. 78.53. Thank you very much, class. 78.53 kilogram meters squared. Let's remember our units, right? Always remember your units. 78.53 kilogram meters squared. So that's what I is. And now we know that I, uh, that, that one half MV squared, let's do that. One half M, oh, I forgot to tell you what the, the mass of the car was, didn't I? Uh, it is 1,600 kilograms. So the mass of the car is 1,600 kilograms, a standard car. You know, it's a, well, it'd be, it'd, it'd be a truck, let's say. All right. So one half times 1,600 kilograms uh, times uh, 27.71 meters per second uh, and the whole, whole thing squared. And that, why don't I give you a, a, a number here anyway? This is 617,000. 283, and what are my units? That's right, joules, kilogram, meters squared per second squared. So uh, yes, that's gonna be joules. And now what we wanna do is we want to make that uh, uh, equal to, right, um, I omega squared divided by two. I'm just doing that to try and save some room there. And so what we get then is we get omega, right, is going to be equal to our kinetic energy of the car, 617,283 joules, divided by uh, 0 0.5, there's one half, you know, one half, I just threw it over there, uh, times I. And of course, I is 78. 0.53 kilogram meters squared. Extend that a little bit, put some parentheses around there. And then we want that taken to the one half because I've got I omega squared. So it's divided by I, divided by one half. I could have put a two up here. It would have been probably better. Um, but I've got everything there. And so that's going to give me omega. And uh, actually, I'm just going to punch that in. 617.283 divided by 0. 0.5 divided by 78.53. And then take that to the square root. Gives me 125.4. And my units are radians per second. There you go. You know, if I wanted to turn that into um, uh, revolutions per minute, right? I could just multiply it by 60 and divide by two pi. So times 60 divided by two divided by pi equals, uh, it's 1197 RPM right? 1197 RPM. So you're looking at that, you're saying, well, that's not so bad. You know, that's 1200 RPM. The, the thing's pretty small. It's only one meter. That's like three feet. That could easily fit under my car. And you know, it's only uh, uh, 10, right? This is only 10 centimeters thick. It's only like uh, four inches thick. So it's not like it's going to take up a whole bunch of room, uh, you know, under my car or, or they could put it where uh, the Tesla battery goes or, or something like that. You know, that's what you'd think. What are we missing? What's the mass? What's the mass? What is the mass? The mass of this, I don't have any place to put it, but it is, and you could do it just pi r squared L, right? Uh, I'll put that pi r squared L. 0.5 squared, that's going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.1, so 0 0.25, uh, um, 0 0.025, uh, 
Anyway, you, you get the idea. So 0.25 of, of uh, let's say four is gonna be like one and then that's 0.1. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, you can see <clears throat> that uh, if I multiply that by 8,000, I'm still gonna get a mass that is 628 kilograms. 600, you're carrying 628 kilograms around with you all the time. What if you're driving up to the top of Mount Washington, right? You're carrying that whole 628 kilograms with you. Do you know how much that is? 628, I'm gonna cut a piece of board out here for myself. Kilograms times 2.2 .2 equals 1,381 pounds. That's almost uh, half the, the weight of your car, right? Okay, well, that's it for this lecture. I'll see you at the next lecture. Sorry about that uh, void in the center there. I, I really thought that I had uh, paused it, but I guess I hadn't. I couldn't have been longer than 20 seconds or so. All right, see you there. Bye.